Ambassador, thank you very much for uh, granting us this uh, conversation. Thank you very much uh, for having me. And uh, I look forward to it. Me too. So, I'd like to start by asking you about your own career, because you seem to be all over the place. <laughs> I mean, you were five years a delegate of the Kosovo Assembly, by which I mean you were a parliamentarian. I yes. Think, yeah. And then you went to, to journalism school. Yes. In other words, you went from being parliamentarian to journalism no, I, I did it sim simultaneously. Simultaneously. Yes. Yes. But part of it was in the United States and part of it was in France. Uh, yes. In the United no, States. No, I did, I did courses here and I did courses In the United States, America. where? Well, those were specifically designed programs for... Um, for um, Young leaders of uh, I of see. Our so. and France as well, the Paris. Yes, yes, yes. And then um, you went into um, diplomacy. Yes. You were deputy foreign minister yes. and even foreign minister for a while. Mm -hmm. How does that happen? Well, I think my my course, my career course, um, is exceptional because uh, the circumstances were exceptional. I believe extraordinary circumstances also provide with extraordinary mm -hmm. opportunities. Um, as I was growing up, uh, I've seen my nation struggle and fight for freedom and, and independence. And when faced with um, evil and terror, you don't sit on the sidelines. You, you want to take part. Mm -hmm. uh, so for me, being involved in, in um, our national movement, liberation and for freedom, it came naturally, basically. It, it came very, very naturally. And I don't think it was a choice. As I was growing up, I didn't have a choice to dream whether I want to be a scientist or artist or a um, school teacher. When, when you're oppressed, uh, other values are suspended. Mm -hmm. Even dreams are suspended. So... Um, for me, fighting for freedom was um, joining the cause because I, <laughs> I was too young to fight. But joining the cause and then later being polit politically active was just a natural response to to the situation. And I'm glad that young generations in Kosovo have no longer to do what <laughs> what I did. Right, but as a, as a uh, prime minister, as a foreign minister, you must have been. The youngest foreign minister in Europe. Until until the Austrian foreign minister came now to the prime oh, minister. Right. <laughs> so your record has no longer exists. It's been broken, yes. Been broken. <laughs> and then you were minister for European integration, mm -hmm. which meant in what exactly, given the fact that, uh, as far as I know, Kosovo is not a member of the EU. Uh, precisely. Uh, countries or even a Schengen, uh, or even a signatory of Schengen, uh, I am. No, uh, but precisely because we're not an EU member, uh, we have a ministry in place uh, that is responsible to do the inter institutional coordination in order to prepare the country to to join the European mm -hmm. um, uh, to join the European Union. So my job back then was to make sure that any piece of legislation that was adopted in Kosovo was aligned uh, with the with the Acta Communautaire with, with the European Union. Right. Uh, legislation. Also, every institution, every regulation had to be aligned uh, with the one of the European Union. So that was basically my job. Re and reverse on, Brexit. Ex exactly. <laughs> and uh, and uh, later on, uh, I I was the chief negotiator for the Stabilization Association Agreement with the European Union, which is the constitution of right. the relationship between an aspiring country. And the uh, European Union. So Kosovo is actually an associate. Yes, uh, we have we have signed. The but with aspirations to membership. Of course, and. Uh, Are uh, you in the next enlargement list? Uh, yes, uh, as uh, as you um, might have noted, the European uh, Commission has uh, yes. uh, published its right. enlargement uh, platform, and uh, what is clear is that all the, the Western Balkan countries have a clear. A clear European perspective, and this was uh, this was a very positive sign uh, yeah. from from Brussels. Uh, our part of the world, um, the Western Balkans, we still have 
a lot of differences, right. a lot of uh, unfinished business between yes. us. There is a precondition, but, in fact, that, um, exactly. which we will get to later. But, uh, but what if there is one common denominator throughout the region, that is the strong will and desire to join the European Union. Sure. So um, uh, it was a very important signal, especially now when uh, we see we see our part of the world has become a chessboard between different um, competing powers. Uh, Russia is as aggressive and as present as it has ever been. Um, of course, uh, Kosovo is a natural border right. to the Russian influence. You know, we are by yes, far yes. the most pro-American nation on earth. But um, we see them very active. There's a statue of Bill Clinton and the street named after him, if I remember right. Well, I think they are the only country in the world uh, where they have a Bill Clinton statue next to a George W. Bush Boulevard in oh. the same city. So, but that is a clear sign of uh, appreciation and gratitude uh, uh, that we have for the United States of, uh, of America. So, as I was saying, we, we, we see. Uh, competing powers in the in the region and Russia has become a very uh, destructive destructive force. Uh, so it is very important uh, not only for Kosovo but for the entire region to see a clear signal from Brussels on enlargement. When was Kosovo not a pawn in uh, in the big power uh, game all the time? No, I don't think we were a pawn. I think. Um, I mean, a pawn, not in the sense. I mean, in the sense that you know, there is a checkboard and there are places you move around. Well, I think I think it's a place where where values crashed. Uh, Euro Atlantic values uh, and uh, hegemonic values uh, from uh, from Milosevic and and, and Russia. Uh, so you are on the right side of <laughs> on the right side right. of uh, of history. Um, the the pro-American sentiment, you know, it's not only a, 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 a geopolitical orientation. It's it's a sentiment that's deeply rooted in in the hearts and, and minds of uh, of every Kosovo. These are expectations of what you'd like to achieve when you by the time you left. Well, first and foremost, to preserve the very special bond, the very special right. uh, nature of the relationship between um, Kosovo and the United States. Um, of course, uh, uh, my first priority when I came here was to try and remind uh, the administration that uh, Kosovo is still unfinished business. Mm -hmm. uh, we're still not a UN member. Mm -hmm. We still have not concluded our uh, state infrastructure, so mm -hmm. so to say, and this is not something we can do alone. Unfortunately, this is not something Brussels can do alone either. Right. Um, as the record shows, as as the history, the recent history has taught us, without direct U.S. involvement. The course of history in our part of the world can take a very, very uh, dangerous turn. <laughs> so, um, at a time of competing priorities uh, from North Korea mm -hmm. to Iran, um, I will, first of all, I'm grateful and thankful that Kosovo is not a hot spot yes, <laughs> anymore. Yes, yeah. But it's other, still, get lost, uh, it is still unfinished business, yeah, yeah. and if not taken care of properly. The record in the Western Balkan shows that the progress is easily reversible. Right. Especially now when we see very aggressive Russia in our part of the world. We have seen just recently uh, what they tried to do in a very aggressive form in Montenegro. Yes. So, and, we, and you know, we're all interdependent, and instability in our neighborhood is an instability for, for Kosovo mm -hmm. as well. Of course. So, to my first job was to try and um, um, get the attention and uh, remind the administration that although peaceful, our part of the world is still um, unfinished uh, business. Mm -hmm. And I must say that, um, uh, not of course, this is not to my credit, but uh, 
together with my colleagues, also from uh, our neighboring countries, we have managed to to bring uh, Kosovo and the Western Balkans at, uh, at the heart of, uh, of the of the priorities um, at the State Department. So that was the first one. Right. Secondly, for me um, and for Kosovo, it's uh, very important to establish the armed forces. You know, we celebrated our 10th uh, anniversary of uh, independence, yeah. but we still don't have an army. Uh, that is because uh, the votes in the parliament, the constitutional changes in the parliament right. have been, have still uh, been, are being hold hostage of the Serbian minority uh, MPs. So what happens is that whenever there's a, there's a, a military uh, legislation to establish the military, the Serbians vote against it. They don't vote at all. Or they vote at all. Yes, and um, according to and our you constitution, need, what, a two we, third majority? we will have a two-third majority, but uh, in order to have constitutional change, uh, oh. we need a double majority. We need I see, not yeah. only the majority of the Albanian vote, right. but also of the uh, non-Albanian right. uh, members of the of the yeah. parliament. So this is part of the. Of the legislation of the constitutional uh, rules that we we adopted after we declared independence, um, but um, what has become very obvious in this ten years is that uh, uh, the Serbian members of the parliament in, in Kosovo um, refuse to take part in this debate not because uh, they don't want to, but because they are instructed by Belgrade not to. And uh, I think the time has come for us to be more creative and to look at different uh, ways on how we can establish our, our armed forces. It's, um, it's a fundamental right of Kosovars mm -hmm. to have their own armed forces. Now we know that in the century we live in, it's not the army that protects you, it's the quality of your alliances that mm -hmm. provide security. Right. Nonetheless, uh, we believe the time has come for Kosovo to contribute, right. not only to consume uh, security. We want to be able to develop our own forces that will be able to serve alongside U.S. and NATO soldiers uh, all, uh, all around the world. You, you are not members of NATO. No, we're not. And that you cannot be a member of NATO without an army. Uh, so, Iceland is a member of NATO. So. Um, well, uh, they have a specialized forces, but in order to have, they have a specialized forces, but in order to have to enter. Iceland the, does. Yes, in I order. They to, have no, no military at all. No, they do. In order to, and they had the peacekeeping uh, soldiers in Kosovo also. Right. But oh, there are Icelandic. Okay. I at one point there yeah, were. Right, right. <laughs> but in order to in order to enter into partnership for peace, you mm -hmm. need uh, you need to have you need uh, to have uh, an army to demonstrate that. Can I just sort of it, it can be, it doesn't have to be having right. military, it, it, it can be a small defensive mm -hmm. force uh, specialized in certain fields. Can I just uh, sort of go over some of the, the basics of this? There is still a NATO presence in Kosovo. Yes, yes there right. is. It's small. Yes. Nonetheless, it's a presence. Yes. Uh, as I said, Kosovo is now a peaceful country. Right. Uh, and so what is its 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 uh, its its excuse me interrupt its its main purpose is to keep everybody apart, in a sense to stop them actually going at each other's throats. No, I we haven't had scenes like that <laughs> in, in over a decade, but their main focus and uh, goal is to preserve peace in um, in the region. I guess uh, okay. to protect Kosovo from. Um, Any possible incursion, uh, yes, exactly. right. Anybody exactly. gets an idea. Yes. Uh, and, but there is a police force, presumably. Of course, we have a police force, we have security forces, uh, but we don't have an army. Yes. And in terms of uh, your uh, constitution, you're a unicameral? One, one yes, we have one chamber. Uh, we have 120 members of, of the right. parliament, and 20 seats are reserved for. Uh, for uh, non-Albanian, non-majority uh, communities. The majority is Albanian. Yes, over 90% of the population is Albanian. Is However, there are Romas, there are 
there are Romas, Turks, yeah. Ashkenazi, yeah, Egyptian, yes, Bosnians, yes. uh, Montenegrins, yes, right. uh, but uh, when we, uh, as we were laying um, down the foundations of our new state, uh, we made sure that there is a positive discrimination for non-majority uh, communities. Hence, we have the 20 reserved seats in the parliament for, for the non, non oh, for that, I see. 10 are reserved for Serbs and other 10 are reserved for, uh, for uh, okay. right. non -Albanian, other non-Albanian and non-Serb uh, communities. We also have a deputy prime minister who is a Serb. We have members of the government. Serves. The deputy prime minister is a serf yes. by constitution. Yes. Well, not as by constitution, serfs have to be part of of the government, uh, but the deputy prime minister is by choice. So. I see. So it could be any other uh, minister. Yes. 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 Just so long as there was a minister. Yes. Deputy. Yes. Uh -huh. Well, but the, in that case, can I, as far as the army is concerned, a thought strikes me, which is that. Um, as far as combat experience, you have a lot, a lot of characters around, do you not? Um, some of whom are more um, uh, legitimate, let's say, than others these days, or regarded as more legitimate than others. I mean, is there an unofficial sort of army, if you see what I mean? No, no. What we have is a security force. Right. But their mandate is, restri is, is restricted on, on emergency uh, response. Right. Okay. Right? So they're not an armed force. No. And uh, they have been trained by the best standards. Uh, and they have been grown and developed under the NATO supervision. Mm -hmm. Now, in order, what we want and what we need now is to transform, to expand the capacities of this force and to transform them from armed forces, uh, from security forces into an armed force. Armed force. And uh, this is where we've been stuck for uh, right. almost right. a decade. Absolutely. <coughs> In fact, this year you celebrated your 10th anniversary, if I remember rightly. Mm -hmm. um, we've been discussing what needs to be done in a, so far. Remember, um, we win, remember, we but in, in terms of international, uh, your, in, your, your, your uh, position, your place in the international stage, I mean, what have you achieved? Well, a lot. <laughs> right. uh, we, unfortunately, we're still not where we would want to be. Right. And if someone would have told me uh, that whole day in February when we declared independence in 2008, that 10 years after we would still not be a UN member, I would have probably been shocked. <laughs> but here we are. Uh, nonetheless, um, Kosovo has been recognized by the overwhelming uh, majority of the free nations of the world. Uh, we have been able to join dozens of um, regional and uh, international uh, organizations. Nonetheless, because of the Russian veto, because of in, the, in the Council. we are still not right. a member of, of, the, of, the, United, uh, of the United Nations. Um, but um, every day, uh, more and more, our youth uh, and our talented people are transcending uh, political boundaries and uh, making us proud uh, on a global stage. Uh, last year, we participated for the first time in the uh, Olympics. Right. And uh, we won our first uh, golden medal. Right. Uh, it was far first participation and it was the first in, gold judo. Uh, and it was won by a girl. Uh, so uh, you should never say we fight like a girl in uh, Kosovo uh, because uh, women in Kosovo fight pretty hard. Uh, <laughs> um, and we have other young, talented people who are excelling in different fields from arts to sports uh, to science. So, a lot has been accomplished, but of course, uh, much more remains to be done. Needless to say, these are challenges that Kosovo won't be able to overcome alone. No matter what we do, we will never be able to change Russia's position. Hence, we need... Well, the Russians, in fact, uh, don't recognize Kosovo, and presumably the Serbs don't recognize Kosovo. Uh, but uh, but there are some strange other strange. For example, Cyprus doesn't recognize Kosovo. 
And I can't understand why that should be. And even more surprising, Spain. Why is that? Well, I, I mean, given that, you know, most of the European Union uh, yes. does, it's just... Yes, there are still five EU countries uh, that have not uh, recognized independence of Kosovo. Nonetheless, I, I need to say that this is not an anti-Kosovo bloc. It's not a homogeneous anti-Kosovo right. bloc. They all have their they have individual reasons. different reasons uh, why they have not recognized. Um, anyway, the, nonetheless, they have uh, all supported uh, Kosovo's European future. Right. None of them has objected the Stabilization Association Agreement for Kosovo. And they were there when the new strategy for the enlargement was adopted, and none of them objected Kosovo being a part of it. I think many of them missed the opportunity to, to recognize Kosovo uh, right after um, the International Court of Justice ruled about the legality of Kosovo's admission mm -hmm. of independence. As you might remember, uh, after we declared our independence, the Serbian um, government charged, uh, charged uh, uh, filed the case yes. at the uh, International Court of Justice. Yes. And uh, the ruling of the court was as clear and as unambiguous as it could be. It clearly stated that Kosovo was within its rights when it declared independence and that um, no international law was violated. Right, yes, yes. I think that provided a perfect opportunity, not only for the five non-EU, <laughs> for the five EU non-recognizers, but also for other countries around the world to take the right step. Uh, but as I said, um, they have their own um, individual uh, excuses, uh, I must say. And well, let's take Cyprus. What is their excuse? Well, they still have their um, unresolved uh, situation with, oh, with the uh, exactly. The Turks. Yeah. So um, I guess this is why they still haven't made uh, I the see. move. Because if they recognize you, then but, why would they not recognize the uh, Turkish uh, enclave? But there's no analogy uh, whatsoever. Uh, the not, yeah. Declaration Kosovo's independence is not a product of the possession. The same with the. Uh, oh, because of the Basques? Yes, but you know, um, Kosovo's independence is not a product of a secessionist yes, movement. Yes, yes, yes. Our independence is a product mm -hmm. of a consensual dissolution of Yugoslavia. Kosovo had borders long before it had statehood. Right. Right. Um, but um, as you know, in politics, uh, and internet and in international relations, right. things don't always go as uh, as planned. But the undeniable truth is that Kosovo's independence has brought more peace and stability in the region than ever before. Our region, although as I said, with a lot of um, unfinished business, mm -hmm. is has never been more peaceful in in, in decades. If not to say in centuries, and although we, we disagree with Belgrade, although we have a lot of com um, open uh, um, issues, we meet regularly in Brussels, and we have established dialogue as a tool to settle the remaining uh, differences. Kosovo and Serbia have entered the process of normalization of relations. Uh, the presidents uh, met uh, last week in Brussels, um, they meet regularly, and we hope that very soon um, there will be, as uh, European Union has requested, a legally binding agreement, which means a mutual recognition, uh, and that would lead to full normalization of the situation, not only between Kosovo and Serbia, but it will reflect positively throughout the region. So actually, as I understand it, um a settlement, a recognizable, internationally recognizable settlement between uh, Kosovo and Serbia is a precondition to um, the advancement of uh, your countries. membership application and theirs. Yes. I see. So it's in both your interests. It is in our mutual interest uh, to, to find peace. And ultimately, it is in our interest regardless oh. of the EU uh, platform. We are neighbors. Right. Bless or doomed, we will be living next to each other for the rest of history. Right. We can
cannot change what happened, and we cannot certainly change our feet. Right. We are there, and they will be there. So the sooner we close this dark chapter of, of the past, the better it will be. You know, yesterday, the day before yesterday, actually, marked the 19th anniversary of NATO intervention in former Yugoslavia. Oh, okay, yes. And every day, we're reminded of, of the atrocities and of the crimes and the attempted genocide. One million people were deported from Kosovo. That's over half of the population. I was among those who were deported. And I consider myself a lucky one because I was not harmed. My parents survived, survived my sister survived, and I made it back home. But this is not the experience of 20,000 women that were raped, thousands of children that were killed, and many more who lost everything they had. So a very steep price was paid for our freedom. And we are going to be forever thankful and grateful to the United States and other NATO allies who stepped in, who acted, and who decided to tell the Bashkirs that Enough is enough, and we're not going to allow atrocities of that magnitude at the, at the heart of Europe. So two questions. One of them is, there is now, however, in Kosovo, um, a generation growing up that doesn't know any of this. Isn't that right? Well, um, a baby that was born right after the war today is... 19. Yes, exactly. So yes. you have a rising generation yes. who yes. looks towards Europe because that's what they think yes. they yes. should do, right? Yes. Um, and that's and how they're it should doing be. doing their thing, uh, and, and, and this is all in the past and, that um, and, and your this mother is, talks about. That, but not, and, you know. th and this is how it right. should be. On the other we hand, we will uh, never forget what happened oh, because nice. even the ones who who are born after the war have someone, have an uncle who's mm -hmm. missing, right. or an aunt that was raped. So we have all been directly affected by by the war, but people need to move on. Right. We will not, we will forget, but we will never forget what happened. Because that's the best way to make sure history uh, does not repeat itself. But young, young generation of, of Kosovars, they, they just want to excel. They want to move mm -hmm. on. They want to build a better life. Um, and uh, as I said in the very beginning of uh, our interview, I'm, I'm happy that they don't have to make the choices I had to make. You know, they can dream as big as they want uh, and uh, have a full control of, mm -hmm. of their life without having someone knock on their door and telling them, you have five minutes to leave. What percentage of the population is Muslim? Uh, Kosovo is, uh, uh, first of all, it is a secular uh, yes, yeah, uh, it's, it's, uh, republic. It's, it's, it's uh, the overwhelming majority of the population is Muslim. Uh, but we also have Catholic uh, mm -hmm. uh, community and we have Orthodox uh, community. What we are very proud of uh, as, as a young um, democracy is our interreligious harmony. Not only tolerance, harmony. Mm -hmm. uh, you will see cities in Kosovo where the church, Catholic church, Orthodox church, and the mosque share the same yard. Uh, I grew up celebrating uh, Christmas and Bayram. Uh, but you're Muslim. Doesn't uh, yes, but yeah. for us, it was, have been, yeah. <laughs> we are we have been taught since childhood mm -hmm. to to respect uh, all religions. Furthermore, in Kosovo, the religion was never the main layer of our identity. Uh, we never identified ourselves by religion. We also always identified by our ethnicity. Uh, religion divides us, you know, we have Albanians who are Muslim, we have right. Albanians who are Catholic, <laughs> we have, but what right. unites us all is our ethnicity, mm -hmm. and that's, that was the main layer of, uh, of identity. 
that is what defined us. And when I tell my 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 American friends that our national icon is Mother Teresa, she's from Kosovo. Yeah, yeah, yeah she is. <laughs> People are sort of course, like, she's uh, uh, right, uh, right, right. she is. We are we are Mother mm -hmm. Teresa's nation. Uh, so religion was never what defined us. Uh, it was our uh, it was interreligious harmony and pride of, of our ethnic and cultural roots. Is there any fundamentalist uh, sentiment in, in <coughs> at least part of your um, Islamic um, community? Uh, of course, Kosovo. In other words, is that a problem? <laughs> of, course, of course, Kosovo was affected by right. by the global uh, yes. movement yeah. and uh, and uh, radicalization, but uh, the absolute overwhelming majority of Muslims in Kosovo are um, against um, radicalization. Actually, I believe it is them. It is the it is the um, it is the true uh, believers mm -hmm. who are going to win the fight against uh, uh, radicalization. And mm -hmm. I've seen many uh, devoted uh, Muslims who have stood up and fought against uh, right. radical elements within their communities within their mosques so it was uh, a problem at one point but uh, there was a swift response not only from the institutions but also from the community from the from the how many uh, how long ago was this uh, probably a couple of years ago three four years ago mm -hmm. yeah. you mean young people perhaps going to yes we, we, yes them? yes in Syria yes yes in we had the, there was uh, there was a point uh, four or five years ago when we had a number of young Kosovars completely brainwashed mm -hmm. uh, going, uh, going to Syria, but the trend had stopped and there have been many years when, since we, we've had Kosovar going to Syria. What, what is the, the Kosovo's relation with Albania? I mean, do you regard it as uh, the, you know, you, the, the source of your culture and your, uh, I suppose, ethnicity? Well, Albania is not, uh, well, first of all, we didn't come from Albania. We're uh, ethnic, art, we're autochthon in our, in our uh, land. Uh, we're just Albanians. And well, Albanians live in Albania, in Kosovo, in Western Macedonia, in Preševo, in South right, Serbia. Absolutely. So we're, we lived in our own uh, lands. Um, Albania is, of course, um, um, Albania is not an ordinary neighbor of Kosovo. Of course, we have a very special bond and a very, very special relationship with uh, with Albania. But what unites us uh, now is not only the shared language, but the shared culture, the shared history. What unites us now more than anything else is our joint aspiration to join uh, European Union and uh, this is a dream uh, we share and this is an objective we share and I hope one day, not far from today, mm -hmm. we will share the same uh, European space. The reason why I mention that of course is because of, you know, it's, I was thinking in terms of Latin America and its relationship with Spain, whereas Latin Americans still regard Spain as the madre patria, which is, you know, <laughs> And uh, I know, I, I, I know, but uh, and young, I... young black Americans go to Spain because that's part of it. I mean, do, do young Kosovars want to go to Albania uh, uh, to sort of, as look, I to said, the, 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 the analogy doesn't stand because doesn't our stand. roots are in Kosovo, but uh, we've uh, always been in, in yes, in, absolutely, in yes. So. But I mean, the, the, the history being that. Uh, in 1914, the Albanians separated from the Ottoman Empire, and when the great powers drew the More lines, than... Kosovo was was regarded as separate. No, Kosovo uh, Kosovo was separated because initially yes, they left it out. Basically, they, we yeah. were we were left, uh, we as, were left as they did in Macedonia. Exactly. Right. So, uh, but then it depends how far back in the history we. We want to go and 
young mm-hmm. people in Kosovo don't have time for that. Okay, yes. <laughs> um, now, um, so where would they look to? They, they look they to, look to Europe. Europe, and Albania is Europe. Oh, no question. Yeah. So they look to Europe, uh, they look to the West, uh, they look to America. They always look to America yeah, for right. inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, as I said, we we have a, a shared history, a shared culture. You know, my name is Dora, and Dora is a city in Albania where independence of Albania was declared. Yes, yes. So there is no doubt that we have a very special right. bond. Right. But what unites us is our joint aspiration to to live together in the European Union. When you talk about your past, uh, very movingly, I must say, um, is there a program or is there a specific way in which Kosovo is actually dealing with the situation? With the past? Yes. Yes, um, and uh, I must say it did take us a very long time to sit and reflect on what has happened. Mm -hmm. Because once you're free and you're independent, you you realize that that's not self-sufficient. We were caught in storm by competing priorities. We had roads to build. The country was completely devastated. We had roads to build, schools to construct, laws to adopt. And we never had time to sit and reflect on, on what has happened. And it is just recently, last year, that the president established the Commission for Truth and Reconciliation. It was only last year that we finally adopted the appropriate legislation to to give pensions to the survivors of the sexual violence in uh, in Kosovo. As I said, twenty thousand women were raped mm-hmm. during the war in Kosovo, and for almost twenty years they were completely neglected by the society and by the institutions. Furthermore, they were stigmatized and they lived with shame and we did nothing for 20 years to help them and to support them. So it took us so long but I'm glad we finally we finally did it. Uh, I must praise uh, the non-governmental sector in Kosovo, the civil society, mm-hmm. different NGOs who stepped up and in the absence of institutional platforms, they offered venues and they were offered assistance for different categories that were affected during the war. But now the time has come for, for the institutions mm-hmm. to step in. And I am I am actually happy and relieved that there, there is a platform within the institutions to, to address. And how will this platform actually translate in practical terms? Uh, well, um, the, the, you know, there are, for example, around there is over a thousand people missing in Kosovo still, actually, that are missing since since the war, mm-hmm. and um, the president has established a body for truth and reconciliation, mm-hmm. and the families of the missing people from all communities mm-hmm. meet there regularly, and they uh, harmonize their position and they come up with concrete uh, demands from the government, uh, both in Kosovo and and, uh, and in Serbia. Uh, we have different platforms that are working for transitional justice. You know, it's, I have spoken to so many, so many uh, survivors of, of sexual violence, but also other, other crimes, you know, I've, I've met a woman who had lost her husband and her four children during the war. And uh, what she wants is not only justice, of course justice, whoever did that Mm -hmm. must be punished. But probably as much as she wants justice, she wants an apology. She wants an apology and uh, this is what these platforms are. Mayor Kulpa, is what she yes, okay. and um, the, this is what these platforms are are offering, and it's uh, it's uh, it's, and proven it's, to be, happening. it's happening, and it's uh, it's proven to be.
So we're we talking about confrontations between the aggressor and the. We st and, we're still and not the, we're still not there yet, but at this point we have different, mostly victims, uh, sharing sure. their stories and uh, talking as, to. As for the now. aggressor, um, what is the status with the Hague uh, Court at this particular point? I mean, I. I well, I must say that we've been very disappointed with <laughs> with the way how the International Tribunal in Hague has um, concluded its uh, work, so to say. Right. Uh, the, they've been very slow to 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 convict uh, the perpetrators. Uh, you know, the justice delayed is a justice mm -hmm. denied. And it took how many? Like almost. Five years for mothers of Srebrenica to to find right. justice. And that's not that's merely justice. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a torture. Mm -hmm. So I must say that we've been uh, a bit disappointed with the way how the tribunal has uh, conducted itself. Also because somehow they tried to impose a moral parity between all the parties. Uh, Involved, I see. and that's that's not how reconciliation and justice uh, is uh, is uh, is brought right. to our part of the world. What I would love to see, though, is local uh, courts in Belgrade, in Kosovo, and elsewhere in the Western Balkans do more to to punish the perpetrators of uh, of the war crime. Uh, but now, um, I must say that um, it, maybe it's too soon yet, but I think when someone will write the history of the International Crimes Tribunal for Yugoslavia, it will not be a good time. But just one of the problems that, uh, and this is the problem, this is one of the arguments that's made by the, by the Hague, in fact, and what is the, one of the problems that, in effect, there's a a very, a very um, gray area where you know members of the was it SK? How uh, Kosovo? Yes. KLA. KLA. KLA, KLA um, you know, because basically KLA is now a power as a political power. Is it not? No, KLA um, ceased to exist the moment uh, Kosovo uh, but, was. But, but was four liberated. members. Yeah. Well. <laughs> There were many <laughs> former members right. of KLA. Some decided to go back to their previous life. Right. Yes, that's, that's <laughs> continue doing what they were doing. Right. Uh, some uh, have uh, created political uh, parties and movements. That's what I mean. So that you, yes. you do have a slight area where you're never quite yeah. sure how you, in other words, <laughs> put, put some political uh, resistance yes. can actually internally within yes. Kosovo can actually be brought against, say, uh, you know, uh, the process which takes place in the Hague. Well, as I said, the process in the Hague, the ICTY, uh, the International Crime right. Tribunal mm -hmm. for Yugoslavia, has concluded its work for Kosovo. Mm -hmm. And as I said in the very beginning, uh, we are disappointed that um, there was not enough justice. <laughs> for yeah, so not enough of, people were actually brought before. No. Unfortunately not. Um, and unfortunately, the main perpetrator, <coughs> uh, Slobodan Milosevic, died in prison, yes. innocent. Well, he uh, innocent. He did uh, not get convicted. Was, oh, I see. He wasn't convicted. Uh, the, 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 there was no trial. The, well, the trial said. was taking there was too a trial. long. The no. trial was taking no. too long. Uh, the trial became a charade. Uh, he was mocking the court, he was mocking the tribunal, right. and somehow procedurally he managed to delay the process mm -hmm. and die in his cell mm -hmm. without being convicted. Right. And uh, that is very disappointing, not only for me, but for everybody who was affected by his uh, criminal uh, actions, be it in Bosnia, Croatia, uh, Kosovo, or was this one go forever? By the way, they were mixed up somewhere. But what was the um, was Kosovo, was the period of Yugoslavia um, uh, a bad 
bad one for Kosovo? It was very bad. I mean, under the under the Tito regime. Yes, right? yes. It was Kosovo was yeah, Kosovo was treated as a. It was never a province, was it? Well, we were a province. You were a we province. Were, we had our constitutional rights. Right, we but were you didn't a, have a. No, we were a federal unit. Uh, we were right, a federal. Were a uh, we were a federal unit in, in Yugoslavia until Milosevic came into power right, right, and right, right. Uh, abrogated our autonomy. But even during those times, uh, when we were a um, federal unit in Yugoslavia, um, we were completely discriminated. Uh, you've heard of Nelson Mandela, of course, but um, let me tell you about Adam Demachi. Well, you know who Adam Demachi is. I've been to Kosovo. Very so good. Right. So he yeah. spent almost three decades in prison. Absolutely. Yeah. In Yugoslav prison. And there were many more political prisoners from, from Kosovo uh, who have spent decades in Yugoslav prisons right. just because of political beliefs. Can you imagine? We were, we were, um, we were discriminated from politics to economy and everything right. else. We built our first highway at the very heart of Europe, just seven, eight years ago. Kosovars were exploited, or completely right. discriminated, even under under the state. Um, how do you find uh, working in? Um, Washington as a woman diplomat. I know that's probably a sexist question, but, <laughs> no, it's not. but it's okay. uh, I mean, you know, it's, here you are, um, you know, an ambassador in, in Washington. What what are the problems? What are the challenges that you find here professionally? Uh, well, I must say that for a diplomat, uh, Washington is the place to be because, um, and especially if you're from Kosovo. <laughs> Uh, Washington is the main address uh, for uh, consultations and for alignment. So for me, it's very fulfilling uh, to be here in Washington. Of course, uh, being uh, an ambassador of a small country um, is uh, is challenging. Um, you know, you you have only five minutes to make your case, and if you don't make your case in five minutes. You lose, uh, you lose the the attention because there's a crisis uh, somewhere else. And nonetheless, I must say that because of the nature of the relationship we have with Washington, and because of the nature of the relationship we have with America, I must say that for me it's been one of the most fulfilling um, uh, periods of uh, of my career. And um, um, there are there's. Twenty of us, twenty women ambassadors. Well, it changes. Sometimes it's uh, you know. Sometimes yes, more, yes, sometimes yes, less. Yes. But it's around. But it's around. Uh, 20, yes. It's around. Uh, it's around yes. twenty women ambassadors, and um, I must say we work very well together. We we share information. We talk to one another. Although we are from a very different parts right. of the of the world, right. we share contacts. Uh, we share information, we talk to one another, we coordinate, we help one another. So uh, that uh, dimension is uh, also very, uh, very um, enriching. Um, uh, now, being a woman uh, in politics is far more problematic than being a woman in diplomacy. Right. Uh, because in, in, in politics, it's a completely different uh, sure. Uh, 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 battlefield. But here I must say that um, uh, being a woman uh, and sharing the club with uh, another 20 extraordinary uh, women has been one of the most enriching experiences of my life. What about the uh, regional uh, uh, arrangements that some national, that some groups have, for example, you know, the EU ambassadors meet regularly. Uh, do the Balkan ambassadors meet regularly? It's, you know what? It's very interesting. For example, when we go at the receptions, somehow we all find <laughs> one another 
you have there the southeastern European yes, rule and uh, the Central America, like we. Yes. But then there is some of us like me who crosses those yes. <laughs> uh, right. those border borders right. and uh, and reaches out to to. But do you other. meet regularly? Uh, well, I mean, the Africans have, meet regularly, for example. Uh, we we, we have we meet, we meet very frequently. Say we, we do meet actually very very frequently and uh, um, but I think the role models uh, are the Nordics they are the best yes and I wish I could join them as an honorary member it's they do fantastic things together right. and yes, uh, that's true. I hope that one day uh, Western Balkans uh, ambassadors can can do the same well outside of Europe the Latin Americans get together very frequently too. They get together once a month. It's a, there's, the organization is called Grula. They do get, but then after a while, um, it's not only about sitting around the same of table. Course, yeah. It's about it's doing, doing things stuff, yes, together. Right. And on this regard, I think the Nordics are the champions of, of all. Okay. <laughs> okay. Finally, um, is there a time frame around the NATO uh, presence in Kosovo? Yes. Uh, no, uh, there isn't, and uh, I consider that uh, NATO should continue to be present in Kosovo, not for a peacekeeping purpose anymore, mm -hmm. because Kosovo is at peace, but for a geostrategic uh, balance. Uh, mm -hmm. Russia is building uh, a base in southern Serbia. Now they call it a humanitarian response base. If it's a humanitarian response, then why are we asking for diplomatic immunity for, for the personnel? So we all know what, what it is. Right. Hence, we all, I believe that it's uh, not only on Kosovo's interest, but it's in the interest of the Euro-Atlantic Alliance right. to preserve uh, uh, some form of presence in, uh, in the Western mm -hmm. Balkans. And they are already in Kosovo, so uh, yes, they, so are well they are so. welcome. Ambassador, thank you very much for thank this conversation. Thank you. It was my honor. Thank you.